National Association of Black Journalists had Donald Trump on earlier today, and he just gave a spectacular performance. I mean, just an all-time performance from Donald Trump, showcasing that he is not exactly the best at dealing with contentious interviews, especially in a relatively hostile environment. I do wish there was like, at least on the aesthetic front, if there was like at least one black male journalist on there who was also cooking him, or at least like a centrist, it would look even worse for him overall, because his goal here is literally to captivate or to capture any kind of black male voters that he can potentially go after, but it's a dud anyway. That, I think, was the old method against Joe Biden. That's not going to work against Kamala Harris, especially when the entire Republican Party is just running the DEI narrative, uh, which is something that every black person, every brown person, every person that's not white has heard a million times over in their lives. So it's just an immediate reminder of what that is. It's like affirmative action, CRT, DEI, woke. These are all substitutes for basically saying you don't deserve your position because a white person and deserves your position. You actually were only appointed to your position due to your skin color. It's just a reminder of that white supremacist narrative. And if he doesn't have a good enough counter to that, if he doesn't have a good enough way to move away from that and like talk about Kamala Harris's qualifications, he's going to negatively polarize people against him. People that he's trying to actually win over to his side. A lot of people did not think it was appropriate for you to be here today. You have pushed false claims about some of your rivals, from Nikki Haley to former President Barack Obama, saying that they were not born in the United States, which is not true. You have told four congresswomen women of color who were American citizens to go back to where they came from. <laughs> you have used words like animal and rabbit to describe black district attorneys. You've attacked black journalists, calling them a- By the way, every single thing that she's saying is true. You might be like, oh, well, she obviously has an agenda, but it's like, but it's true. He did do all of those things, okay? Like, her bias in this situation is completely irrelevant to the points that she's making, because the points that she's making are absolutely correct. You don't even say, hello, how are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. And I think it's disgraceful that I came here in good spirit. Uh, I love the black population of this country. I've done so much for the black population of this country, uh, including uh, employment, including uh, opportunity zones with Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, which is one of the greatest programs ever for black workers and black entrepreneurs i've done so much and you know and i say this uh, dude <laughs> i love the black population 60 plus year old white men can never navigate this situation correctly it's like losing ground regardless it's like when people will come into my chat and be like hassan you never have black women on as your guests or you never have black people on as your guests it's like there is no effective counter to that you just have to be like dude shut what am I supposed to say to that? Turn around and be like, oh no, here are all the black people that I've had on my show. Like, that's a ridiculous. You just immediately, you're like, you're being weird and racist. Like it is. And especially when you're like a 60 plus year old white dude and Joe Biden was really bad on this too. You just always come across like you're saying, I got binders full of blacks in my cabinet, which is what Joe Biden basically said. If you recall on the BET interview that he conducted, he was basically like, I, I have so many blacks. I have so many blacks. It's never a good look. It's just never a good look. It's like something that is not going to be easy to address. You know, you're in a bind in that situation. But Trump, on the other hand, <laughs> the only way that if you're Trump to answer this question, the only way to do it is like, listen, I'm, I was the president. I was the president of all Americans. That includes black Americans as well. Here are some of the policy positions that I've pushed for. You know what I mean? Instead of being like, no, I've, I love all the, all of the black people. I love all of the black people of America. Some of your own supporters, including Republicans on Capitol Hill, have labeled Vice President Kamala Harris, who is the first black and Asian American woman to serve as vice president and be on a major party ticket as a DEI hire. Is that acceptable language to you? And will you tell those Republicans and those supporters to stop it? How do you, how do you define DEI? Go ahead. How do you define Diversity, it? equity, inclusion. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Is that what your definition? Give that me is, a, that, that give, is literally Give me a definition then. Would you give me a definition DEI. of that? Give me a definition Sir, of that. Sir, I'm asking you a question, no, no, a you very have to direct define question. It. Define the, 
define it for me if you like that's what it means <laughs> like it means diversity equity and inclusion she just defined it in my head canon he's like no literally i don't know what it means everyone keeps saying it <laughs> In my head canon, I'm imagining Trump literally being like, I genuinely don't know what those words mean. And I'm kind of scared because everyone always talks about it. Can you help me out a little bit? Like, it would be so, so sick. <laughs> I just defined it, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is only on the ticket because she is a black woman? Well, I can say, no, I think it's maybe a little bit different. So uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly very much. And she was always of Indian heritage, and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until the number. <laughs> yo! Hey, yo! Bruh, bruh. Blackness in the United States of America is literally historically associated with the one drop rule defined by whether white supremacists consider you black or not. You can't just like pull that ripcord. It's like saying Obama is white because he's half white. Absolutely zero people think that way. Saying that to a room full of black journalists is insane. About a woman born in Oakland too. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's also funny because simultaneously the Republican Party's like, maybe Kamala Harris was not born in America, okay? <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. A number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She is always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a historically black college. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't because she was Indian all the way and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went, she became a black person. Just to be clear, sir, do and you I believe think, that she is- I think somebody should look into that too when you ask a continue in a very hostile, what? nasty tone. It's a direct question, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is a DEI hire, as I, some Republicans I really don't have know. said? I mean, I really don't know. Could be. Could be. They're like, what difference does it make? Obviously, she's not an Indian woman, okay? If you're half black, you're black. That's just how it works, okay? In America, because that's just the way white supremacists see you, and that is how society treats you. That's number one. Number two, even if she was just like straight up an Indian woman, that's still calling her a DEI hire in that circumstance would still be the same. It just doesn't make any sense unless you mean DEI is just directly a substitute for the N word. <laughs> So it doesn't fit in his mind to Kamala Harris, who is Indian and not black, I guess. He's like, what do you mean? DEI it just means the N word. It doesn't make sense for Kamala, who's Indian. Is that what he's trying to say? I don't get it. I know this lady right over there, Harris, is a fantastic person who just interviewed me at length. <laughs> And we had a great interview, I think, and I heard you got very good ratings on that Well, interview. you told me it was the longest one of your life, so <laughs> we had a good discussion. Look, I, I want to talk about why you're here today. I mean, it is not lost on us how divided we are as a country. And as you were coming today, we really got to see that we were divided along the lines of race, along the lines of gender. Yeah, Gloria Harris over here is just like desperately clinging on to any parachute she is donald trump's parachute in this situation is why i hate when people say you are white i grew up around real races and none of them would have considered you white i mean it doesn't matter i think plenty of races if they didn't know my background would most likely say i'm white as a white passing individual i have a privilege okay until they find out my name or my background or anything like that you know i, I that's why i say i'm white they pulled trump off stage that's Project what happened 2025 I, I think we have to leave it there they, by okay. the trump team all right so yeah. we'll leave it we'll leave, that is the last word thank you so much oh they pulled him i i thought it was weird because i thought oh there's one last question about project 2025 and then he was like no we are we're leaving i didn't realize that they actually it was his team that pulled him oh dude that's really that's not good that's another misstep overall i don't know what the f he was thinking honestly like there is no reason to attend this you could have just straight up said i'm not attending it because kamala's not attending it in his mind he did great i mean this like plays well for all the weird sweaty gross racist losers where he's like look at trump owning black women in broad daylight on a public stage my goat is back my king is back doesn't look that great to moderates in general i don't think it looks great to the black men that he was trying to win uh, the votes of and win favor with no nah, it's to say he did it and he supports black people more than anyone i understand that but i'm saying that the reason why he wanted to do this is specifically because he thought that he could manage through this navigate through this conversation in a way where he kind of didn't look like a
The problem is there's no spin here. You know what I mean? Now it just looks like he's at odds. He's shifting from disenfranchised extremes to center, but he can't pivot. Yeah, I mean, he's stuck in the middle here. He's stuck in the middle of like his own background, what he's done so far in terms of his like commentary, in terms of like how he has presented himself. He's stuck in this place where he's like trying to moderate, but he's not having a good time doing so. But also the trying to moderate angle he was doing against Joe Biden. Maybe there's another instance there now that he's going up against a black woman right maybe the instinct there is oh i just hit max racism here thinking that that will be good it might play well to the base but it's not going to play well to moderates it's not going to play well to independents the biggest problem with the republican party and i say this pretty much every single day i repeat it every single day they're so high off their own farts that they think every American thinks like them. They think every American is just as racist. Every American is just as sexist. Now, while yes, a lot of Americans are racist. Yes, a lot of Americans are sexist. The level, the degree of like overt sexism and racism has to be managed. This is why Republicans used to at least do something known as dog whistles. A will he, won't he type situation where at least there's a little bit of plausible deniability for you an out so that you can shift the conversation back to your opponent being hysterical. Donald Trump, on the other hand, has consistently leaned into horrible instinct overall that is unimaginably toxic to, and this is demonstrable by polling, this is demonstrable by the outcome of the 2020 election, it's genuinely toxic to broader subsects of the society where they just go, uh, that's a little wild for me man i don't know about all this this is the entire conversation surrounding republicans right now and the way that they're having a really hard time responding to the republicans are weird narrative when democrats say republicans are weird republicans double down on the weird where they're like look at all the trans people i have in my phone that's a weird thing why do you have so many videos of trans people on your phone dog what the wrong with you i don't want to see that what's wrong with you i don't want to be around you you're gross you're so sweaty that is the heart of the problem here this is a more holistic problem than one trump could solve and that's why they're stuck in the middle here where they're basically trying to navigate this treacherous sea where they want to look moderate but they can't get themselves to look moderate at all all they've done thus far is one thing and one thing only republicans have blinded themselves into thinking that everyone else is secretly in agreement with them but they're just too to say it because of woke okay because they'll get canceled do you understand and they just cannot comprehend a world where like no the average american might actually align with you on some of the the average American might think trans people are weird or gross or whatever, but they don't think about it as much as you do. And when you are constantly talking about it, then they also feel like you're weird and gross. You're weirder and grosser. Do you understand? This is another great example of this. Obviously, I retweeted this, but like this is the perfect example of this. OK, conservatives, I'm weird. How about I show you 2,500 anti-trans memes I saved on my phone? Still think I'm weird? Dude, look, this is it. I'm curious kind of how you're thinking, you know, when you think about your the way that you put out content and the way that you think about growing your media empire. Here, this is the a blow job. It's so beautiful seeing one of the narratives that I have championed for years become legitimate mainstream talking point finally. Out of everything else, I know I say 2024, year of Hasanabi vindication, but this right here is something that I have talked about for years okay for years i even covered this interview and if you go back and watch my coverage of this interview you will see exactly the same things that i'm saying about how like insanely brain broken republicans are and when they are met with like a normal human being in broad daylight even a liberal journalist such as taylor lorenz friend of the show like she is presenting herself in a much better way then the obsessive psychopathic behavior that Chaya Rachik is demonstrating. It's just like, why do you have a photo of a blowjob on your phone? Like, what are you doing? Empire. Here, this is the, a blowjob. 
what I don't know what Donald Trump went to this specifically because the Republican Party currently thinks that there's an avenue for them to pick blackmail votes from the Democratic ticket. Okay, this was a calculation that they were relying on to a certain degree when they were matched up against Joseph Robinette Biden. Now, having said that, it's just the same exact. I mean, it's like significantly less percentages, significantly smaller numbers than like the non-college educated white vote. But it's from the main constituency of the Democratic Party that reliably votes Democrat historically. It obviously has a larger impact. So that's his goal here. That's why he went. That's why he went. If you're wondering, like, why did he go to the National Association of Black Journalists? Like, like, why did he do that? That's the reason. The problem, however, is that that's not exactly a great political calculation for him because the major base of support for the Republican Party in general historically is racists. We can play a song and dance around it and be like, uh, what do you mean Republicans are racist? Democrats are the real racists? Like, come on. It's just racist vitriol works really well for the most active parts of the Republican Party's base. That's why they cynically will defend Confederate soldiers and Confederate generals and all this right the issue here is that like he can't appear too woke like most race people still vote for him and this looks good for racist people because he's like cooking and being really disrespectful and rude to black women but the goal there is not to actually galvanize the base of support that was already going to vote for him because if you're racist of course you're going to vote for him you know what i mean like of course you're already there you're already in the pocket you're already in the 30% Trump cult. The goal here is to basically be able to present himself in a somewhat presentable way to black men. That's what his goal is here. I'm not saying that this is a successful strategy. I'm not one of those people that's claiming like, oh, black men are voting in droves for the Republican Party. No, it's just the same exact that has been happening with men in general. Like there is a massive gender gap between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party in terms of male voters, okay? That's just the reality. They respond to machismo, but the Republicans don't understand that if you hit it too hard and in a weird way, in a gross way, in the same way that J.D. Vance has been, then you're actually gonna come across like somewhat toxic. Trump does a much better job playing this tightrope than J.D. Vance does, than, you know, Tim Pool does, than all the Republican commentators do in general. What he did today, I think, was unsuccessful in terms of, like, bringing a larger black male voter constituency to the Republican Party. That was the goal, and he failed on that goal. It'll look great for Fox News. He'll be like, he's a big fighter. Look at him. He's just, like, absolutely eviscerating these sassy women. You know what I mean? Like, but ultimately, it's also kind of a setup. Like, the way he operates around black women who are, you know, being content contentious is kind of a matchup for how the public will read how he operates towards Kamala Harris, who's also a black woman who's going to be contentious towards him, right? Ultimately, I think his reaction to the way that they were grilling him is not great. Like, he's not coming across smooth, he's not coming across confident, and he's coming across as desperate, flailing, and very aggressive. Now, that works really well, like I said, with non-college educated men in general. He's owning a woman, right? He's owning a black woman, even better. But will that look good to the base of support that he's trying to capture there? I don't think so. I think that people that see the way he behaves and see the way he responds, especially, I would say, black men that see the way he behaves and the way he responds will be left with a sour taste in their mouths, even if they were like kind of teetering on the edge of potential Trump support due to like some of the factors that the rest of the non-college educated male vote goes for Trump. That's what I think. I think that he comes across is like being super aggro. I mean, there were moments where he just openly was just like, yeah, no, we literally should institute leniency for my supporters during January 6th. But yeah, if you were doing BLM riots, BLM protests, then you, you should be like, that's so obvious. That's such an obvious double standard that you're demonstrating where you're like the criminal justice system is so aggressive so goddamn aggressive towards january sixers or patriots but also simultaneously not aggressive enough at the top of the hour when there's a three minute ad break 